I'm gonna feel obligated to play for you guys. Ooh, good acoustics in here. What's up, GQ? I'm Jacqueline Grazer, and these are my 10 essentials. So this is my chapstick. There's a bunch of different flavors of or scents of, of this chapstick. This is the minted rose one. This is a fairly new one. I, I've never used this one before, but it's beautiful. Like the colors, it's just beautiful. Up to you to tell me if it looks rose on my lips or if my lips look rosy. Either way, I'm flattered. The smell is just like nostalgic to me. This smell reminds me of me. It's like, it smells like babies or it's not like being a baby or like smelling like baby lotion or something baby scented. Oh my gosh, it's just like so soothing. It smells like, it smells like preschool. It smells like preschool. These are my headphones. Ah, the age old problem. I feel like the, the, the classical conventional earbuds are louder than AirPods. My mom always gets mad at me because when I fall asleep in the car, like she can hear the music going through because I play it so loudly. I use these every single day. I use these when I travel, whenever I'm just like idle, sitting, or doing my homework sometimes, or trying to not listen to someone or something. I put these in my ears and I, and I crank it up. If I leave the house without these, then I'm, I'm gonna be bummed for the rest of the day. Even though they get tangled in my keys, and even though it's hard to skate in them and walk in them because they get caught in things and then they fall out of my ear and I get a little bit aggravated, I like these more because they're louder and it's humble. It's like I'm not showing you that, I look, I have gold-plated AirPods from, straight from the Apple store in Dubai. I have these that are tangled and went through the washing machine. These are my four rings. I love the kind of rings that aren't like jewelry. It's just like, it's just metal. I like it because it makes my finger, it turns my finger green and it's and it's kind of grimy and it looks like it's made of pewter and it was like found and dug up somewhere. This is one actually that my girlfriend gave to me before we were dating and I've just been wearing it since. This one I got in Mexico from a fan in Monterey and she was so sweet. I liked it because it was made, it's made from a bearing. So that one goes here. Last but not least, my girlfriend gave me this one as well. It says J plus C on the inside of it, because her name is Celia. It's just a beautiful ring. I think it's really beautiful. And so I put it on, on this finger. And that's just, that's just kind of like a, a dominating feeling. Makes me feel better about having headphones with wires. This is my fisheye lens. I skateboard, so I take skate videos. I like put that there, and, it, and it's like fisheye. This is the future of filmmaking. Filming someone taking a selfie. I love fisheye effect. I love that kind of thing. Fisheye in the face, like, ah. This year I started in a film production class, but I've been doing this forever. I've been making like skits and videos and stuff, but I don't use the fisheye as much as I'd like to, but I always have it on me, just in case, just to be safe. If I want to film someone up close, I'm like, oh dude, you got a great nose for this fisheye. I don't say that to them, but in my head is what I'm thinking. These are my keys. So kids are now putting their keys on their belt. I'm the one who started that trend. In fifth grade, I started doing this. Anyway, just had to clear that up. This I got in, um, in Florence, Italy. When I was filming the show, We Are Who We Are, at the museum where the Statue of David is. It says Firenze Italia. Then another really, like this is the essential part. I could go without the keys. I just need this thing. And people are like, oh no, do you have a screwdriver on you? And I'd be like, Psh. or do you have a bottle opener? Psh. Do you have a serrated edge? And I'll be like, Psh. oh, but then this carabiner, this is a special carabiner because it does this. Well, it's not that special, but it does this. So you can like make sure it doesn't open by itself. This is a jaw harp. It's an instrument that came from Asia. I don't actually, I'm not too clear in the history, but when I play it, you'll know like it's like, it sounds like an American staple kind of thing. Listen. You know, so I like this thing. It's obscure, and I'm a, and I guess I'm obscure. Oh my god, I'm so obscure. And it comes in this little case, and you can put it around your neck if you want. But I don't do that. That's kind of too flashy for me. I'm not a big gloat about the jaw harp. I keep it on the down low. Hermes cologne, intense vetiver. This is actually the first time I've gotten this uh, model species mm, version. I usually get the ones that are like colored. My favorite one is the red one. But recently I got into this one and it's really nice. It has notes of patchouli and it's, it's got kind of like a rugged thing. Oh. It also induces an amplification of self-esteem. It feels good to smell good. When I was a little precocious little nine-year-old, I was obsessed with colognes. It made me feel adult. It was like my, my form of like little young baby rebellion. Not smelling like chocolate pudding, but smelling like Hermes. I actually had more cologne then than I do now. I have one bottle of cologne now. Uh, I should have two, one for date night and one for business. Mmm, 
Notes of extreme blast and body odor. It is degree. I've tried like the ones that have honey and oatmeal and da 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 da. It feels like actually it makes me, it makes my armpits smell worse. God, I sound really gross, but whatever. It smells like my one of my really good friends, his armpits. <laughs> I emulated him in, in, in getting this flavor. Flavor. My friend Wyatt uh, uses this one. When we were filming It, he was growing hair on his legs and on his arms and, and, and his chest and stuff, and I had zero hair anywhere, not even on my head. I had no hair. <laughs> I was like, oh, when I, when I get hair on my armpits, I'm gonna use exactly what he uses. And I, and I, and I am, five years later. I've been through a lot of speakers in my day, but nothing beats any speaker like Bugani. These things vibrate unbelievably, and the and it's insane. I don't really play that kind of music though, I, I, but it's loud. It's not waterproof. I'm not asking for it to be waterproof, frankly. Honestly, I just want something that's loud, but also small enough so I can carry it like this. This thing has seen a lot of places. Uh, it's been to the beach, it's been up in the mountains, it's like fallen down mountains, it's been left at gas stations before. I use it in my house and in the morning, sometimes on a Saturday morning. My mom gets mad at me for this, but I like open my window all the way and I make it facing outwards and I'll like blast like Led Zeppelin or like Grateful Dead or something. It's not music that you could ever say you don't wanna hear. I think, maybe that's subjective. I don't know how people could be like, oh my God, turn that rubbish off. Because like there's, there's nothing wrong with it. This is my Yamaha flute. I started playing the flute four years ago. I never took any lessons. My dad plays the flute and I, I really loved Jethro Tull growing up. So then I, I really wanted to, to learn how to play. I don't know how to read sheet music, but I would like like go on YouTube and like watch like live videos of Jethro Tull and like look at his fingers and like see what he did with his fingers. And it's a hard thing to kind of keep up with, but once you, you figure it out, you, uh, it's like, it's easy. I suck right now because I'm tired. But keep in mind, I never took a lesson. So yes, I skateboard. And when I went to Madrid for a convention, I got the coolest board ever. This is not it. When I went to Madrid for the first time, uh, I did a convention and I went to this skate shop called Welcome Skate Shop and there's a guy there, Jura the Damaja, such a cool guy. He made me a board and I got the cool deck and like the grip was really cool because it was gr half green, half black. Trucks were like these thunder, it was like this thunder collab that I couldn't even post about because it wasn't released yet. It was the coolest board I'd ever received in my life. And also I learned all the, the greatest tricks I've ever learned, I learned on that board. And of course, it had to get stolen. Stupidly enough, I left it at school on Friday and it was there the whole weekend and then I came back and it wasn't there. But also it's annoying because that same thing did happen to me and I left a board that I kind of didn't care about that was kind of trashed and like it was chipping and it was kind of grody. No one stole it. This is not the board, but it's still a, a really awesome board nonetheless. It rides real well, probably because Jura the Damager made it. Jura the Damager, that's his Instagram name. It's a really good board. I got this recently for my 17th birthday. It rides real well. But in all honesty, I don't know if anything will ever beat that board, that I, the first board that I got in Madrid. All right, GQ, that's it. Thank you for checking out my essentials. Love you.